Today we will be talking about customer journeys and how they can be used to automate your end-to-end -end communication process through a series of touch points. Hello, my name is Andrea Klubgia and I'm a Solutions Specialist with Encore Business Solutions. With multifaceted campaign automation, a customer journey identifies leads and guides a target audience to move toward purchasing as they interact with your company. Let's take a look at how to create a customer journey and what the components of the journey are. I want to note that today we are looking at outbound marketing. The main difference between outbound marketing and real-time marketing is how customers enter the journey. Outbound marketing does not offer the same triggers that real-time marketing does. With real-time marketing, the customers in the journey are a result of the actions these customers have completed. You can customize the trigger actions to really tailor your communication to customers, and it is generally recommended when targeting a smaller audience that you need very specific communication for. Outbound marketing, on the other hand, generally targets a larger group of individuals, such as any lead created. Ensuring we are in outbound marketing, we'll navigate to customer journeys and select new. Each time I select new, existing templates will appear for guidance. You can choose from a preset template or you can even save a journey you have created as a template to be used in the future. Once I have selected this, I'm able to start building my journey. The first thing we want to set up is our audience. By selecting new here, I'm able to select the source type for my audience. This can be segment, so either created from a segment or on a subscription list. It can be a table that has updated information or any form submissions. I'll keep it at segment. Now I will look for my segment, so I have one for lead generation. And this is our audience of our customer journey. I want to note that today's video will not focus on what a segment is, how to set up a segment, and other components of D365 marketing outside of customer journeys. There's also the option to add a swim lane. Now, a swim lane can be another group that is running concurrently through the journey. It doesn't interact with the first journey, but it can be put in here just to keep track of the details for it, any statistics, etc. Whether you decide to use swim lanes or put it in its own customer journey is up to the business and really depends on whether you want all the statistics for one journey, are the owners and users who are looking at the journey the same, any reporting afterwards, and so on. Now let's look at the tiles and components that take place after we have our audience set. First one is the basic action of sending an email. The content of the email will need to be created and saved prior to associating with a customer journey. But like other actions, the email message content can be updated at any time throughout. Next, we have conditional branches. The if then branch customizes the communication based on how a customer interacts. So you're able to really drill down based on the interaction type. Example being, if you send an email, what happens if the email bounces? Or how do you want to communicate with someone who has clicked on a link in the email versus someone who has not even opened the email? Split allows you to distribute a set amount of individuals through a branch, allowing you to see different responses. So you can set half of your audience through branch A, half of the audience through branch B, See how they engage, what the results are, and know which marketing strategy is most effective. Next, we have wait and wait until. This just adds some spacing between communications. Uh, so the wait for is a set amount of time, and then the wait until can be a specific day. So if you have an event a week prior to that event, you can ensure that a communication is being sent off. Now we have some actions such as create a lead. 
Create a lead is fairly straightforward, but you can create a different contact record based off of the actions that occurred prior. Creating a lead is very useful for a marketing to sales handoff. Next, we have the LinkedIn campaign. So with a LinkedIn campaign, you can configure customer journey triggers to react when contacts on that journey submit a lead generation form during a specific LinkedIn campaign. This feature will need to be enabled prior in order to use it for a customer journey. Next, we have Run Workflow. This really allows for customization that expands outside of what has been preset in the customer journey. Examples of this include updating a different record, reassigning record owners, essentially thinking outside of the box at what we want to happen based off of these journeys that can be really customized and unique to your business needs. Next, we have sales activity, so appointment, phone call, and tasks. These are activities you can create to follow up with an, with an individual to have another touch point. Again, this is very useful for that marketing to sales handoff. If you look under custom tiles, we see custom channels. Custom channels allow for expansion beyond the out of the box tiles. This can be social media or SMS, for example. Once we set this up, it can display text messages, for example, instead of reading custom channel. Final tile is our event. Now the event tile is a legacy tile that will be phased out and removed in future releases, so we will not focus on this one. Essentially, it is letting the customers know about an event with the link, but now that is being handled through that email message tile. Now let's create a very simple journey with just two steps. So I will choose my email. Now, please note that the reason I didn't have to select email up here is because I set that template out and it already allowed me to have the tile displayed. I'll search for an email. If I decide I want to delete the email or copy the email or whatever the action may be, I can select on the ellipses and have that option right here. I also have these arrows that allow me to drag and drop and really move the tiles of my customer journey around once it's all being built out. Now let's add an if then branch. So I'll select my source as my introduction to leads email. And then I can select the condition. This is where we can really drill down to how the contact is interacting with the email. So let's say it has been opened. If it's been opened, maybe we want to set up a phone call. As you can see, all of these marketing template activities have been set up prior, but if you are going through and creating your customer journey and it has not been set up, you can click new, right here and actually created on the spot as well. For both the phone call and task, I'm able to change who I want to assign this to. So it can be the contacts owner, the contact created by a user, or the customer journey owner. So if this is a different individual, be sure to set the assigned to. Right, now before we are ready, I can select this dropdown and change my name of the customer journey. I'll hit save. Here I'm able to check for any errors, so should there be any missing details from one of my tiles. I have the go live button. So prior to clicking this, no customers will be running through the journey. 
Then I also have the save as template. So this is what we talked about at the beginning when we selected new. If this is the format that is being used for future customer journeys, we can click save as template and then just swap out some components such as what the email content is without having to start from scratch. Go live. You can see it does check for errors while it's going live and then it will publish. Now our customer journey is live. Next, let's discuss some use cases. So what you put in your journey really depends on the end goal that you have. As we saw with this example, a simple customer journey can just be a couple of steps. You identify the target segment and create an activity that addresses the members of that segment, such as sending an email. This example was for lead generation, but additional use cases can be event marketing, so promoting an event, event reminders, event URLs if it is a virtual event or if you need physical address details. After an event, you can track who attended, who did not receive feedback for that information as well. Another example is case management. So should you be making any sort of appointments, you can also create reminders, follow up information. Uh, case management also can include support desk tickets, really allowing for that constant and consistent communication. We saw it a little bit when we were selecting our audience, but another example is subscription lists. So you're able to automate newsletter communication and track details of how well it is performing to see our contacts opening the newsletter, are they unsubscribing, are they clicking links in it, etc. Another example is campaign management. Again, really adding ease to the communication during a campaign and ensuring that it is automated and consistent and that every contact is receiving what they need to receive. I made mention of this one already, but that sales handoff. So if you are marketing and sales, if your marketing and sales teams work closely, capturing the sales readiness for further prospecting is a simple transition from team members through a customer journey. The use cases for customer journeys are not limited to these. It can be used for any communication you wish to automate or any record update that needs to be automated based on communication, such as adjusting something on the account record. As long as you have a marketing plan, you can make a customer journey work for your company. This brings me to the final part of this video, which is limitations. It's important to be aware that customer journeys can't create a map of your customer's interactions for you, nor can it create optimal paths from scratch Customer journeys require understanding your prospects and your customers' existing processes and designing paths that are right for each group. We also saw workflows as a tile option when creating our customer journey. It's important to note that customer journeys do not create system workflows, but they build on top of what has already been created and developed. For help understanding how customer journeys can work for your company's specific needs, please visit Encore's website for contact details.